Hello and welcome to Fantasy Insider. I am Dan Lamy and here is Chris Fedor. If you have questions for Chris uh, about your fantasy team, who you should start, who you should sit, who you should trade for, uh, get into the comment section, ask away, uh, sign into your cleveland.com account. It is free and we will try to get to some questions as we go along. Uh, but Chris, yeah. Josh Gordon owners, <laughs> finally can rejoice because he will yeah. be back on Sunday. What is a reasonable expectation for owners of Josh Gordon uh, this week? Well, don't get carried away here when it comes to Josh. Number one, it's his first week back. Uh, the Browns have already talked about working him in there slowly. Uh, take that with a grain of salt. I don't buy that one. When you've got one of the best playmakers in the NFL, you want him on the field as much as possible. Atlanta is worst in the NFL in pass defense. However, they do have a really talented cornerback in Desmond Trufant. Yeah. And the other thing that I think owners have to understand is this is not the Browns of last year. The Browns of last year had more passing attempts, Dan, than any team in the NFL. Think about that for a second. More than Green Bay, more than Denver, more than New England. The Browns threw the ball more than anybody else in the league. Part of that is they had a pass-happy offensive yeah. coordinator. They had a pass-happy system. The other part of that is they were downing games, and they had to play huck -a chuck late in the game, and they had to just throw just to stay in as much as possible. The Browns are a run-based attack. They're probably going to be in this game against Atlanta because on a talent level, the Browns are right there with Atlanta. So it's not like they're going to be trailing by 25 and they're just going to have to throw the ball late. I still think Josh Gordon is going to be a wide receiver two, potentially a wide receiver one. But I don't think that he's going to come in and all of a sudden dethrone Calvin Johnson, Demarius Thomas, Randall Cobb, Jordy Nelson, and some of these other guys that have been top of the wide receiver rankings this year. Oh, but one thing we know Josh Gordon can do, the Browns receivers have not done much of this year, he can score touchdowns. Yes. Uh, of course, maybe that's the receivers, maybe that's Brian Hoyer, who knows? Uh, but we know that Josh Gordon can get into the end zone. Let's stay in this game though, uh, because we know, uh, we've discovered over the year that if uh, there's a running back playing the Browns, it doesn't matter who it is, <laughs> you start that guy. Yeah, that's right. And the next one is Steven Jackson. So <laughs> Steven Jackson owners, this is your week. And you're right, Dan. Last week, Alfred Blue. Earlier this year, Lorenzo Taliaferro. Even earlier this year, Denard Robinson. It seems like whoever is playing running back against the Browns um, is going to have a good day. And, and look, Steven Jackson's coming off a strong game. He finished uh, pretty poorly in, in uh, the week before, but Steven Jackson has... Look, he's been up and down. He hasn't been great, but he's somebody who is getting about 15 to 20 touches. He's getting about 50 to 75 yards per game. He's getting in the end zone. And I think fantasy owners usually bank on that when it comes to Steven Jackson is that he is going to get that short touchdown plunge. The other thing to watch here is a guy named Anton Smith, who the Falcons have been using kind of in a change of pace role, a big play role. Uh, he is out for the remainder of the season. So maybe that gives more opportunities for a guy like Devontae Freeman. If you're looking for a sleeper this week, if you're hurting at running back, Devontae Freeman, another guy from Florida State, could slide into that role and uh, help out Steven Jackson. But I think this is a week that you certainly want Steven Jackson in there. On the other side of the ball, a little clarity in that running back situation for the Browns. Like you said, the Browns are a running team, so mm -hmm. these guys are going to get carries. Isaiah Crowell, Terrence West now, uh, your guys – not sure who the Browns will end up starting on Sunday. If last week is any indication, uh, Crowell would be that guy. Are either of those guys <laughs> worth uh, a start? I think they're both worth a start, actually. Atlanta is that bad on defense. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the things that you look at with this Falcons team. One of the reasons why they've been so bad this year, Dan, is because they can't protect their quarterback and because they can't stop anybody from running the ball. They don't have a defense like Houston does. Um, and I look at Isaiah Crowell and I say, okay, well, here's a guy who fumbles, but the Browns stuck with him. So that tells me something. That tells me that they believe in his talent. They believe that he can be their featured running back. Um, if they're not going to punish him for something like that, that's a good sign for Isaiah Crowell owners. On top of that, Terrence West is going to mix in there too. That's Something that the Browns have done all season long, Dan, is they've gotten both running backs involved, sometimes three running backs involved. I can't see Glenn Winston making a huge impact. I can't see him making a huge dent in the carries of Terrence West and Isaiah Crowell. So my guess is 
it's probably going to be about 60-40 with these guys. And playing against a team like Atlanta, you can have some success with a guy, even if he is getting 40% of the touches. Uh, now, one area where the Browns have been good is forcing turnovers. Mm -hmm. um, but does that impact uh, any plays for Atlanta this weekend? Um, I don't think it does, actually, Dan. I still think you want to go with Matt Ryan, even though the Browns' uh, defense has been better as of late. You go with Matt Ryan. You go with Roddy White. Roddy White's been on a tear lately. Uh, he's finally catching the ball. He's getting targets. He's also getting targets uh, near the end zone, which is a big difference for Roddy White than the beginning of the season. You'll want to go with Julio Jones. you want to go with Steven Jackson. So I'm not all that concerned about it. I think there is a chance that this is the kind of game where there are a lot of different guys in fantasy football that are going to be in lineups and a lot of different guys that are going to be able to score because of that. Uh, now, an injury that a lot of people are watching, and I've got his, uh, his game log up here, mm. um, Larry Fitzgerald. Yep. What, what's going on with him? What should owners of Larry Fitzgerald <laughs> be thinking right now? I think they should be thinking, can Carson Palmer come back? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are certain quarterbacks that make more sense with certain guys. Yeah. And for Larry Fitzgerald, it made more sense for him. He was a better option with Carson Palmer. Uh, when it comes to Drew Stanton, it seems like uh, Michael Floyd is a better option with him and John Brown is a better option with him. So far, Drew Stanton has thrown five touchdown passes since taking over for Carson Palmer. Larry Fitzgerald doesn't have a single one. <laughs> Michael Floyd has two. He got two last week yeah. against Detroit. John Brown has the other three that happened earlier in the year. So Larry Fitzgerald, less than 100%. Drew Stanton is his starting quarterback, and he just doesn't have that same kind of relationship with Stanton that he did with Carson Palmer. So I think you want to stay away from Larry Fitzgerald, especially this week playing against Seattle. I mean, if you go back to Larry Fitzgerald last year against Seattle, he struggled at times. Yeah. And a lot of guys struggle against Seattle and Richard Sherman. So there are just so many signs right now saying stay away from Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, it's too bad because, I mean, after that slow start, he was starting to get going a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it just a month ago, he had seven catches for 160 and a touchdown. Again, that coincided with Carson Palmer coming back. And just two weeks ago, Dan, he had nine catches for 112 right. yards. And finally, fantasy owners were thinking, hey, this is the guy that I drafted. I thought Carson Palmer was going to throw to him all season long. Michael Floyd taking a back seat. Now it's Michael Floyd stepping back into a bigger role. John Brown in a bigger role and fits taking a back seat again. All right. Uh, obviously, trade deadlines uh, looming for a lot of owners. I got to ask you, mm. best fantasy trade you've made? <laughs> it actually happened this year, Dan. Oh, look at that. See, I'm somebody who likes to sell high and buy low. And you don't necessarily in fantasy football want to go just by production. You want to be a smart yeah. guy. You want to look ahead to the schedule. You want to talk to yourself about the talent that the guy has. So if you remember, at the beginning of this year, I recommended everybody picking up Matt Asiata. But I also said, there's a dirty little secret about Matt Asiata. He's not very good at football. He's only a touchdown guy. If you look at his games, Dan, he's got a three touchdown game. He's got another three touchdown game, but he doesn't really get yards. What you were banking on when you picked up Asiata is the opportunity that he got. And at the beginning of the year, he got that opportunity. I was able to play him for one game, and then I quickly flipped him. Yeah. Because an owner just looked at his production and said, wait a minute, Adrian Peterson's out. They don't have anybody else that's going to run the ball. This dude's going to get like 25 carries. He might only get 50 yards, but he's going to get 25 carries. I know that he's not going to be taken out in the lineup. So I called up the owner, and I offered him Matt Asiata in a package for Eddie Lacy. At the time, Eddie Lacy was struggling. Remember, everybody was like, what's going on with Eddie Lacy? Yep. I used a first-round pick on Eddie Lacy. He doesn't have any touchdowns. He doesn't have any yards. He's splitting carries with James Starks. Is this the time to start worrying about Eddie Lacy? And I said at the time, his talent is going to come through. He's played a really, really difficult schedule at the beginning of the year. And an owner panicked. And I got Eddie Lacy in a package for Matt Asiata. Look at you. It was incredible. Here's the best news. I also... I forget what wide receiver I threw him. Oh, Eric Decker. So it was Matt Asiata and Eric Decker for Eddie Lacy and Percy Harvin. 
All right. Not only did I get the better wide receiver, <laughs> I got the better running back. There you go. I won that trade big time. But I'm going to go back to uh, college here. All oh, right. okay. You remember when Sean Alexander was oh, like my goodness. ridiculous? MVP, Sean. Just ridiculous. Yep. Well, You're this right. is kind of right before he had gotten into that mode of you just don't do anything with Sean Alexander. So mm -hmm. somebody offers me this ridiculous package. I had to give up like a quarterback and like three wide receivers for Sean Alexander. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to do it. Just carried me to a fantasy championship. <laughs> that's ridiculous. the amazing thing. And that's what I would say. The trade deadline is probably today. Maybe it's next week in some leagues. Dan, that point that you just made is enormous. You're through the bye weeks. Yeah. So sacrifice your depth for star power. You don't need four running backs at this point. In one of my leagues, Dan, I've got five running backs that I feel like I could start on a weekly basis. I've got Arian Foster. I've got Eddie Lacy. It's the league that I pulled yeah. off the trade for Eddie Lacy. Ryan Matthews, Jeremy Hill, and Charles Sims. I'm trying to unload one or two of those guys, and I'm trying to find an owner that is off to a slow start that needs more bodies. And saying, yeah. hey, man, you can have two starting running backs and a starting wide receiver for one of your running backs. Something along those lines. This is the time of year to do those kinds of deals because you don't need to worry about the depth. And look, if you have an injury, you have an injury. You can't control that in fantasy football. But I got news for you. You know, if a guy like Arian Foster goes down and you're just hanging on to Charles Sims <laughs> for depth purposes, Charles Sims isn't going to be Arian Foster. <laughs> yeah. He's not, no matter how hard he tries. So it's better to take Charles Sims and somebody that you have at wide receiver or maybe two wide receivers or a wide receiver and a quarterback and go for that home run trade. Try and get LaShawn McCoy. I'm telling you right now, so many people are concerned about LaShawn McCoy. He's talking about the year that he has had. I had somebody, Dan, earlier today ask me, should I start Latavius Murray of the Oakland Raiders or LaShawn McCoy? I was like, well, what? <laughs> huh? Latavius Murray got a few carries last week in Oakland, and maybe he's going to be the featured back moving forward, but come on now, it's LaShawn McCoy. But that's how people panic when guys start to underperform that are first-round picks. You could take advantage of a LaShawn McCoy owner, and Shady's got a really, really good schedule down the stretch. All right, question. Uh, somebody in our, in our comments uh, he's got to start two of three. Alfred Morris, Frank Gore, Mark Ingram. Okay. Every week, th th this guy has benched Frank Gore. He ends up producing, but he stinks when he starts him. Uh, he's leaning towards Gore and Morris just because Washington and San Francisco give up a lot more fantasy points to running backs. But what do you think? Well, I think, actually, for me, if it was my team, Dan, Mark Ingram is in that lineup. I'm going with Mark Ingram for sure. Um, because they don't have a lot when it comes to running the ball there in, Saint, uh, in New Orleans. And if you look at Ingram, the opportunity has been given to him. 24 carries, 30 carries, 27 carries, 23 carries. This is a true featured running back. And in fantasy football, you are searching for somebody that's going to carry the ball like that. Yeah. Because so much in fantasy football, you have to deal with these committees. And you don't necessarily know. I mean, even Eddie Lacy. Eddie Lacy has been terrific lately for the Green Bay Packers, Dan. But, I mean, look at his number of carries. 10, 14, 13, 12, 14. So if you can get somebody that carries the ball 20 times plus, you have to have that person in your lineup. So I'm going with Mark Ingram for sure. And I really think the debate here, Dan, is uh, Alfred Morris and Frank Gore. Now, the matchup obviously favors Frank. Frank's playing against Washington. Big Alf is playing against San Francisco. San Francisco is one of the best run defenses in the NFL. In saying that, I, I think this is the kind of game where uh, Washington needs that physical element. When you're playing against San Francisco, you can't just run away from trying to run the ball. You have to try and out-physical them. It's very, very difficult to do. But Big Alf is coming off a game where he had 20 carries, nearly 100 yards, his 96 yards, the biggest output that he's had in terms of yardage on the ground this year. I'm going to go with Alf. The matchup is not in his favor. The matchup favors Frank Gore. But uh, as this owner can attest to, it's hard to trust Frank Gore right now. All right.
There you go. Fantasy advice from Chris Fedor. You can, of course, tweet at him anytime, 24 hours a day, Thanks, seven Dan. days a week. Appreciate that. At Chris Fedor uh, with your fantasy advice. And, of course, uh, I will talk to you Sunday uh, before the Browns game. We'll get some yep. last-minute fantasy football advice up. Uh, that will go up between 1130 and 12 on Sunday to get your last-minute uh, starts and sits so you can win this week. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to help you win because I can't anymore. No. You're a lost cause. I am done. I gave up on you a long time ago. (laughs) I will do it for another edition of Fantasy Insider. Join us again next Thursday at 1230. For Chris Fedor, I'm Dan Lobby.